Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from EasyAutomation.com and welcome to another video for Selenium with CSharp.net course. And this video will be talking about writing custom methods for Selenium control, a complete continuation of our last video. If you remember in our last video, we were discussing how we can write custom methods in Selenium with C-sharp using this class file, as you can see over here, where we tried writing custom method for a click operation, super simple, and then we performed an enter text operation using clear text and then performing a send key operation. And then we also tried moving our select operation, which is the drop down selection all the way from our code to here. And they're all working fine as expected. I really wanted to extend even further to give some more example of how that you can use this particular Selenium custom method to ensure that you can get most out of it. For example, as you can see in this particular code, we have selected the drop down using this particular value and it is just going to work as expected. But if you think about this particular code, which I told you to work as homework, but I don't really think that I wanted to just let you do as it is just like that, because there are some complexity in C sharp syntaxes and stuff, which I really wanted to show you in this particular video so that you get some more idea of how that you can make use of the advanced C sharp syntaxes and at the same time, do some more refactoring while you write the custom method. As you can see, the total number of lines of code in this particular page is quite a lot, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight, including the braces. So it is quite a lot, but we are gonna move them all to the custom method, and then we'll see how we can reduce the number of lines of code, and also make the code more reusable, and make all the complexity encapsulated into the custom methods. Well, as I said, we'll see how we can write the multi-select code as well. If I've already written that, very well done. If not, this code is going to be very, very straightforward as well. And I will show you how that you can write it. For example, if I'm going to write the multi-select operation, if we would have already did that, if not, I'm going to write it like this. So I'm going to say multi-select elements because it's going to be multiple element. So I'm going to say in plural as elements. And then I'm going to say iWeb driver of driver and by of locator. And because we're going to be selecting multiple element, I'm going to use a string array of values. So this is how I'm going to select like multiple elements over here. And the rest of the code is going to remain exactly the same. I'm going to say select element of multi select is equal to new of the select element. And then I'm going to pass the driver dot find element of the locator that we have got over here. Cool. So that is going to be remaining the same. And now I need to select all the elements. If you remember in our last video, while we were discussing about selecting the element, we used to select using by value for this. So we can do the exact same thing as well. We could just select all the elements over here using by value. But because this is going to be an array type, which is the values, and I have to select all the value one by one based on the array of values, now I have to do something like this. I need to perform a for each the values, which is going to be var value of the values, which is this one. And then I need to perform a multi select, right? So I'm going to say multi select dot. And then I'm going to say select by value of the value that I'm going to pass in, which is these values. So you can see that the coding looks a bit complex this time but it is taking care of so many things for you now. Now you may be wondering like how I can use this method. Again, it's very straightforward, right? So all you have to do it in here is you're gonna say selenium custom method dot select or maybe multi-select elements and then pass the driver and the locator is gonna be this one, the by of locator. So I'm gonna cut this paste it over here. And now I need to pass a string array over here. So how do I pass string array in C sharp? Well, you can create new of string array, all those things. But because there are new syntaxes available in C sharp right now, you can just use the two open square braces and then you can pass the multi one and multi two. So you can just pass like this and cut this value. And then you can pass it like that. There we go. So now you see that all these three lines that we have is completely not required. I can just select like this as well. But while I do this, you see here, now we're getting a compliant over here saying that there is no multi-select option or the variable itself to get all the selected options that we have got, which means I also have to write the custom method for this, which 
to see or to get all these selected options from the multi-select UI. So how do I actually write that? Well, in order to write that, I'm gonna go even further and I'm gonna say, get all the selected list items. So I'm gonna say public static. And you see that now our code is just keep increasing quite a lot this time, right? Like we started off with only one custom method, but now we realize that the custom methods are super, super important for us to be written in this class file. And we're gonna keep expanding this as a lot like a library and which can be used across our team members. Well, now the next method is gonna be selecting all the list items or getting all the list item. And because we're gonna get the list, all the list of items, I'm gonna use a list type just going to return a string of items. If you remember, even in our last video, while we tried to print the value in the console.write line, it used to be like option.text, and text is basically a string type, as you can see over here. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna return it as a string type over here. Sorry, I just clicked the wrong button. And I'm gonna say, get all the selected text. So I'm say get, on selected lists probably and i'm gonna say i web driver of driver and i'm gonna say the locator just gonna be by of the locator so how do i actually get all the elements we know that this is the code that we have to do for that so let me cut this whole code i'm gonna paste it over here to get the list of all the items but again we need to perform the find elements because I need to get the multi-select operation. So I'm gonna copy this code and I'm gonna paste it over here so that I can now get the list of uh, the element which I need to select all the options and then I need to iterate through. But I need to return the value. I don't want to print the value in this particular method itself, but rather I need to print this value instead of printing the value. So in order to do that, I'm actually going to do this. Because we're gonna return the list of string, I'm gonna create a list of string here, and I'm gonna say options is equal to new list of string, something like this. So this way, once I iterate through the selected options, I can just keep adding it into the list. So I'm gonna say options.add, of the option dot text so this way you can see that i can now add all the selected options in this particular list that we have got and finally i'm gonna say return the options cool you see here now this whole code looks really really cool i mean now we can reuse this whole operation so i can go to this code and then i can do var or maybe I am keep talking about var, but let me introduce it. This is the correct time to do it. So instead of you doing the list of string get selected options is equal to selenium custom method dot get all selected elements of passing the driver and then this particular locator over here, which is also correct for you to do this, instead of list of string, you can actually use a var type here. So the reason why you did the list of string here is because you know that the return type of the get all selected list is basically of a list of string type. And that's the reason why you put a list of string here as a return type. Rather, you can also use var type here. Even if you specify var type, it is an implicitly typed variable in C sharp. So if it is implicitly typed means it is aware that what type that it is returned from this particular method. So because it is implicitly typed, now you can see that it automatically knows that the get selected options is of type list of string. This is so cool, right? So you don't even have to specify what type it is all the time, like how we were doing all these days with iWeb element of iWeb driver and all these things. We can now even refactor the code to just use var type. It is also available in Java right now. So you can use that something, something like this. So you don't have to specify a strong type, rather you can just specify a implicitly typed variable in C sharp. So if you're not aware of the var type, I would highly recommend you to just go through some readings 
in our C sharp for automation testing in our YouTube channel, which is available, or you can just go through ChatGPT or Google to understand what is var type in C sharp. And now you can print the value. So you can print the value using another for loop, right? So you can say for each of var selected options, and then you can say console dot right line of the selected options like this. And now you can run that code and you should see the code hopefully works fine as expected. So let's see if the code works. There we go, it's all selected. And you can also see that we have got the multi one and multi two being selected, which is good. It is working as expected. But you can think about this like Karthik, this has not reduced quite a lot of lines of code. Even here, I have to do a for each. Well, I got that what you're saying. Instead of you doing this way, I could actually do this in other way as well, the for each loop. So basically you have a shorthand of the for each loop even in the C sharp um, way. So what you can do is like, you can just say, get the option something like this. And if you hit dot here, you see that we also have a for each, which is going to perform an action of string of action. So this is a bit advanced. Uh, but it is very simple, at least for this context. You can just use this for each method and you can just pass a console dot right line here. So this way it is going to reduce the number of lines for you. So you can just pass the for each of console dot right line and it knows that it is going to, it, it needs to loop through this iteration of list and then it needs to print the value. That is what you're talking about in the action over here. So I'm not going to talk about C sharp actions or stuff, but this is a soft hand way you can actually do that. So it's going to result the exact same thing as well. So it's going to run the code as usual uh, and it is going to print the value for you. There we go. You see here it has the multi one and multi two printed. So this is all the thing that we have uh, on the custom methods. And you can see that the custom method has quite improved this time. And just a small pro tip. So if you are typing the code and if for some reason you just typed something like this uh, over here, or maybe you have more spaces or you're not quite better in the alignment of the code, uh, something like this, you have got so many spaces. You see that there is a small, uh, like a cleanup symbol or a broom symbol there. You can also hit that broom symbol to automatically clean up this code for you. So once I do that, you see that it automatically cleans up the whole code with all the alignments and refactoring of the code, which is really handy as well. And even over here, you see that we have this unused uh, usings over here and we have, we might have got some uh, code cleanup required. So I'm going to hit this code cleanup here and he said it did some cleanup and it also removed the unused usings from here because it's part of the cleanup in the Visual Studio, which is automatically available, which is great. So you can do that and keep your code more tidy up all the time. And as I told you, we can use the var type everywhere. So I can even get rid of the list of string to var type uh, and even this select as var and this as var as well. So now our code looks more neat instead of we specifying all the strong type rather we can just specify the implicitly type variable here everywhere wherever that we require so now you can see that our code is more refined much better with all the selenium's custom controls and this is how we can keep expanding our code to more advanced level starting our next video we'll be talking about page object model of selenium and also we'll discuss how we can even further customize the custom method that we have written over here